Okay, so I'm going to give you the latest in my bicep surgery recovery update. Now, for those of you who are unaware, last year I tore, I ruptured from the bone, my distal bicep tendon, this one here. So the bicep pings up the arm, has to be surgically reattached to the bone. Now, originally when I did this, I did what everyone does when they've got a surgery, almost everyone, is that they spend time on Google trying to find people that have had the same thing, try and see how long it would take to recover, anything they can do to make it better, what to expect, blah, 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 blah. And I didn't find that much. Um, it's interesting to read different kind of case stories, but I thought it would be really helpful to people who went through the same thing to see a video literally watch someone's recovery, watch how much their bicep improves over what space of time. And I hated doing it, it was a very vulnerable state for me, but I knew it'd be helpful for other people, so I made that call and I decided to do the series. Now, it was way more popular than I expected. In terms of messages from people who I'd never met, a lot of people found me on YouTube for that purpose and then have since asked me how my bicep recovery is coming because my last video update was so long ago. So, as much as I didn't think people would care that much, if I'm honest, I had a surprising amount of messages from it. So here's my update. So, I focused very, very exclusively on regaining muscle size as quickly as possible. I'm very vain, it's part of my job. I felt self-conscious about how small this arm was and how people were looking at me when I was training, that type of thing. So I focused exclusively on that. Strength-wise, I didn't necessarily care that much. My number one priority was regaining muscle size. I had a very, very quick spurt of muscle growth, kind of four months or so after when I was allowed to start lifting slightly heavier weight. My muscle growth really, really sped up and it got back to a respectable size pretty quickly, but then gains leveled off and it became much, much slower. Now, because I was so focused on regaining muscle size, I was very, very stubborn. So I would often get a lot of pain and discomfort on the elbow and I would train through it, as a lot of people probably do. So for example, um, if I'm bicep curling, right now I will often get a lot of pain in the forearm. My bicep is not necessarily the limiting factor. I don't get the same bicep fatigue as I would on this arm. My forearm would hurt and that would be what caused me to stop but I would keep training through it, trying to you know, do as much as I could. So because of that, I get quite a lot of pain and discomfort in muscles on the forearm on a very consistent basis. And I also think that that is probably one of the reasons why I don't have full movement on it. For example, if I supinate, you can see I can't fully supinate on this side. If I pronate, I cannot pronate fully on this side. So I cannot do barbell curls, I cannot do reverse curls, even with an EZ bar, even with an empty EZ bar, I just don't have the movement. Um, I can't do chin-ups, I've really struggled with wide grip pull-ups, although I can hold the bar, there's just no strength there. So training's been difficult. I have been pretty much limited exclusively to hammer curls in terms of bicep work or direct bicep work, um, parallel grip pull-ups, which I'm fine with, and um, pretty much staying on neutral grip work for rows, seated rows, cable rows, whatever. So that's basically all I've been allowed to do, all I can find that I can do. I can kind of three quarters supinate, but I can't supinate fully. So when I do dumbbell curls, it, it looks a bit of a weird angle. I can't fully supinate on them. So yeah. In that respect, I think the pain that I have now and the lack of movement I have now is quite possibly um, largely self-inflicted. Of course, I can never say how self-inflicted it is. I don't know if I didn't weight train at all, if I wouldn't still be getting pain and discomfort in this arm. But what I do know is that when I get pain and discomfort in this arm, I am a stubborn shit and I train anyway. So in that regard, I'm kind of my own worst enemy, I guess. So, in terms of size, most people when they look at me head on don't notice that I've, I've had surgery. Um, if I go like this, you can kind of tell that this arm is a little bit smaller than this arm, but most people, whether they're honest with me or not, I'm not sure, but most people say that the difference is marginal. I notice it, but people kind of have to look close before they, they point it out. 
Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a comparison. So this is my good arm, and then this is my bad arm. As you can see already, I can't quite supinate to the same degree, so it's almost like I need to flex there. So it's good arm and bad arm. This one, you'll find that my tricep is even smaller. Um, it wasn't just my bicep that was affected. So in terms of size, it's got back to a decent level, but it isn't quite the same as this one. Um, but it was half centimeter smaller before my surgery. Don't judge me for knowing that. Um, okay, so training wise, I also struggle on bench press. For example, because I can't pronate as much when the bar comes towards my chest, I can pronate this arm, whereas this one I can't pronate as much. So I have to use a very specific grip to keep the bar level and to go all the way down. So my bench press strength is still way down from what it was before. I mean, probably only 70% of where it was, and I just can't go heavy with it yet. Also, the muscles in my forearm will often find that the bar almost shakes on this side because I can't hold it quite steady. It's just weaker than this side. So yeah, in terms of strength, I am still much weaker. I struggle to initiate movement. So if I'm doing dumbbell curls, if I only curled from say there to there, I'd be fine. But if I fully straighten the arm and try and curl from there, it feels really, really weak at the bottom. So prior to my surgery, I would be able to curl say 26 kilo dumbbells, maybe for a set of eight to 10. But now I haven't lifted anything more than a 14 kilo dumbbell. Now, although they feel relatively light in terms of bicep stress, the muscles in my forearm become quite painful by the end of the set and they feel like the limiting factor still. So curling strength is way down, barbell bench press strength is way down, um, rows seem absolutely fine. So in terms of actual strength, it still feels like it's okay. It's just some exercises aggravate the muscles in the forearm more than others. So my strength on most rowing exercises and cable rows and stuff like that isn't actually significantly lower than it was before. It's just the pull down movements, pull up movements, bicep curl movements. Um, I'll show you my scar. I don't know how close to the camera I'll get. It might auto focus a bit, but forgive me. So the scar, you might be able to see. I don't know how good the light is from there to there. It's pretty difficult to see. Sorry, I nudged the table a bit. It's pretty difficult to see. I know people that have had the same procedure and their scar is much, much thicker and often more pink. Mine is kind of a similar skin color now, but for a few months post-surgery, it was quite a bright pink and it was it stood out quite a lot. It didn't look particularly nice. Whereas most people now don't even notice a scar until I point it out. So yeah, that's basically the update. I'm kind of 14 months or so post-surgery. Muscle size has come back pretty well. It's still not where I'd like it to be, but you know, that's just me being fussy. Strength is coming back, but not as fast. I still have some difficulties on some movements which might be self-inflicted or at least partly self-inflicted. Um, so rather than me making this video even longer, if there's anything you think I've missed or you've been through this procedure and you want to know something specific, send me a message. I can always do another video or I can just reply and try and give you something more detailed rather than making this one twice as long. So I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, just fire them over. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training. My Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. And thanks for watching. Bye.